Hello everyone, my name is Randy Brown. I'm with the customer success team here in the US Southeast. Today I want to talk to you about resuming suspended users in the vault. Uh, in the past, this has been a fairly manual process. You'd have to launch the private art client, move into tools, administrative tools, users and groups, go find the user, click the trusted net areas and then activate the user. Uh, well, today I'm going to show you uh, a script that I wrote that will do all this via the APIs. So it will retrieve a password via the CCP and then use that password to uh, call the REST APIs to resume that user in just a few seconds versus, you know, potentially minutes, depending on how your uh, environment set up. <clears throat> so let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is jump over into the private art client to create our user uh, to actually unsuspend other users. So you're going to go into tools, administrative tools, users and groups, new user. I'm just going to call this resume user just for simplicity in the demo. Uh, I'm going to set a simple password because I will be managing that password later on. Uh, this user will need access to audit users and activate users and that's it. Now that we have the user, we're going to jump over to the PBWA and I'm going to log in as an administrative user in my demo environment. From there, I'm going to create a new application ID. So you're going to click on applications and add application. I'm going to call it app underscore unlock user. Right? And then I want to authorize my components machine or the machine that the script will run from. Right? And I'm just doing that by IP address. You can also add more authentication methods, but I just want the IP address for our demo. Now that that's created, I'm going to jump back over to the private art client, go back to tools, administrative tools, users and groups. And I'm going to create a new group this time. I'm going to call it unlock group. I'm going to add three users to the group. The application ID we just created, the app ID for the CCP provider, and then the user uh, that will actually be doing the work for us. No, I didn't add the last one. There we go. Now we have three in the group. We're going to use that group to actually permission the safe to allow access to the credential. So the first thing we we'll need to do now is actually create a new safe. Now that we're back in the PBWA, in my case, I'll need to create a safe. Uh, I don't have a safe that I want to store the user in. CyberArk local accounts is what I'll call this safe. And then I'm going to permission first that group that we just created with the default permissions, use, retrieve, list, view audit, and view safe. All right, and then I'm gonna add all authorizations, and I'm gonna add my local administrators, or my CyberArk administrative group. And this is just for future proofing to make sure that will always have access to this safe and then I just remove my individual membership because I'm getting membership through the groups. <clears throat> All right. So from there, I'm going to add the account that we created earlier. Uh, in this case, it's an application. I'm using CyberArk Vault as the platform that I'm going to be using and then CyberArk Local Accounts is the safe I'm going to store it in. All right, for the address, I'm putting in the IP address of my vault server, since that's where the account lives. And add the account. Now that they have the account added, the next step I'm going to take is actually modify the object ID. And the reason I'm going to modify the object ID uh, is because currently it's set to something that's long and complex, and uh, I don't want to use that. I'm also going to go ahead and rotate this password right away. I want something a little simpler uh, to use in my script. So I'm going to call it user unlock. All right, now that that has all been taken care of, we're ready to start modifying the script. So 
I'm going to download the zip file from GitHub and the GitHub links will be provided. Download the zip. I'm just going to extract it to my desktop. All right, now let's edit the script. We're going to modify the section here under global variable declarations. So the first thing you want to modify is the URI. Make sure that it matches the URL to your PVWA. In my case, it's components.cyberarchdemo.com. The next thing is the app ID. So in this case, it's going to be app underscore unlock user. And again, that is the name that you created when you created the application. So app underscore unlock user. Uh, the next one is going to be the safe. So in my case, it's going to be cyber arc local accounts. All right. And then the folder is typically root. In my case, it's going to be that. And then the object name. So again, the object name of the account uh, that we modified earlier, which should be what's in the script, but we're going to verify that. unlock user unlock and also password manager did rotate that password at 12:52, so we're good there so user unlock so that's already set so that's it we're going to save this and we're ready to run that script so let's jump over to powershell actually let's lock a user out first so we can see that part so i'm going to use my user john and intentionally lock him out or suspend his account. All right, if we come into the private art client, again, the old way of doing things, find John, trusted net areas, you can see the user is suspended. So let's jump back over to components. Let's move into And I'm just going to run the script. It's going to prompt me for the user to resume. There we go. So let's jump back over to the client and let's check John one more time. And you can see now it's active. So that's it. Uh, the script will also take um, the user as an argument. So again, you can run this script being called from another script if need be or any other sort of automation if need be. Uh, and that pretty well covers it. Thanks for your time.